this evening's edition of Nets to Check News. I'm Artem Lieberman. And I'm Marlise Betterman. Our top story tonight reveals a devastating truth about a man whom we're all grown up to love and trust. We now have documented proof that our leader, Fernando Menevin, has been deceiving us since he came into power. Tonight, we will take a look beyond the charming, seemingly perfect facade of Fernando and see what's really been going on since Natchechek has been in his hands. Here is the shocking truth behind Fernando. All these authentic photographs and interviews have been submitted to us through reliable sources. The civilians interviewed tonight were to remain, wish to remain anonymous for security reasons. But I believe I can assure you, these are all real. Their pain and suffering cannot be fabricated. Let's go. have caused much controversy. In many of his speeches, Fernando seemed overactive, extremely hyper, and sometimes a bit paranoid, which was cause for great concern. In breaking news, we have uncovered that Fernando had a secret drug addiction and was centering his love for drugs as the basis of fueling our economy. We have members of Fernando's Red Shirt Army with exclusive inside information. When did you first realize that Fernando had a drug addiction? I remember, Fernando is very secretive. We didn't get to meet with him much. However, his whole plan about keeping kids off the street and putting more money in the economy revolved around drugs, so it was pretty apparent. What, what do you mean it revolved around drugs? Well, Fernando claimed that in his pocket plan, he was putting his own personal money into the economy. Well, it wasn't exactly his own money. As a red shirt, we were told that our main goal is to get drugs off the street. But we didn't know that all the drugs that we were confiscating would end up being sold in international affairs. Are you saying that when Fernando said that he had great international affairs, he really meant that he was their dealer? Yes, but it even goes beyond that. Another red shirt job was to take members and drug dealers off the street and place them into correctional facilities. We thought we were going to be helping, but in fact we were hindering. His correctional facilities ended up being massive drug manufacturing labor companies worked by children and teenagers. Fernando, was used, Fernando used the money he gained from this to create inform infomercials, posters, and statues dedicated to praising himself. His pocket plan consisted of him pocketing our money. The money that wasn't put into making I Love Fernando t-shirts was used to produce more and more sweatshops. Never ending cycle of deceit. Did you ever go to those sweatshops? No, but I've heard stories. Why didn't you tell anyone what was really going on? Who would I tell? I was supposed to be the authority. And also, if I wasn't the one on the street doing the terrorizing, I would be terrorized. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, and you've really just got to protect yourself. Well, that selfish attitude sounds a lot like Fernando's. Thank you, Anonymous Red Shirt member. Imagine, we are being mis misled from the very start. Let's go to Artem for another inside interview. My family's was also not as it seemed to be. Tell me, Orphan, what did Fernando do? He promised us that we would be put into a loving home with a mommy and daddy. That's how he lured us off the street. I thought I was going to be put into a family, but instead I was put into a sweatshop working 20 hours per day. 20 hours? That's a bit extreme. What were the conditions of this sweatshop? They were so crowded and we smelled of blood, sweat, and smoke all the time. We got really tired by the end of the day, but if you'd stop, they'd beat you. And if you took more than a five minute lunch break, they'd beat you. And if you cried when they'd beat you, they'd beat you more. The men in red shirts weren't very nice. Shirts? Does this mean the red shirt army was abusing children and deceiving them into working absurd hours in disgusting sweatshops? The red shirts weren't for our protection, they were Fernando's secret mafia. Yeah, we were really scared of them. When I was living out on the streets, I watched them terrorize people into giving over the little stuff they had. No one had any money, so everyone was just trying to get as much of it as they could. This is why there was so much crime. We had to deal with this, and at such a young age. See, Fernando is a drug-obsessed, child-beating monster. Here's Marlies. To lower the crime rate, he promised that his Red Shirt Army, his effective police force, would take hoodlums from the street and place them into correctional facilities to help them overcome drug addictions and anger management issues, thus protecting the streets of Natsitsha. However, this was not the case. Here we have a civilian that was taken off the streets and placed into one of Fernando's so-called correctional facilities. Please tell us what really was happening. Fernando's plan to protect, correct, and perfect was definitely just a play to get the voters. His correctional facilities were actually secret drug manufacturing and sweatshops where people living in the ghetto were brought by force. His red shirt army proved to be 
like 10 of my friends. Obviously, Fernando does nothing of the hood. Do you think he lied about his travel past? <laughs> if you really knew the terrorists that went on in the hood, you wouldn't be adding to it. We had obviously no money, not food, shelter, nothing, and Fernando's pocket plan certainly wasn't helping. So I turned to drug dealing. It was the only way to put food on the table. But that was exactly what he wanted. The second I was discovered as a drug dealer, I was snatched up and taken to be one of his workers. So what you're saying is that Fernando purposely impoverished his nation so that he could have an excuse to enslave them? Pretty much. Whoa, thank you. Back to our... Police Batterman with an insightful interview. Oh my god, this just in. Fernando, who has been hiding since discovered as a master drug lord, has finally been found. Police force ready for a drug bust. Fernando, Fernando, do you have anything to say for yourself? I do not have a drug addiction. in from our least betterment, who is just fired due to her illiteracy. A very sad story. Fernando misled us with his eloquent speech and charm and made us believe that he was helping our nation. But really, he was a reverse Robin Hood who actually wasn't from the hood. He was taking money from the poor and using it for his own selfish benefit. He was enslaving our youth and terrorizing our streets. And that's it for tonight's edition of That's a Check-In News. I'm Artem Lieberman. And I'm